What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, ever since we started give, when we first gave out our list, at the bottom of that list was always She-Hulk. And we haven't let up ever since. <laughs> In fact, it's gotten even more and more brutal as the months passed by waiting for this show to make its arrival on our TV screens. First episode is out. I watched it, Brian. I wasn't, listen, it wasn't horrible. It was humorous, but it wasn't funny. I smirked at certain things. I'm like, oh, that, yeah, that's funny. But it wasn't like, I wasn't like laughing out loud. Comedy. This is supposed to be a comedy, right? Legal comedy. But I like how things happen with her, her origin. They just got right to it. They didn't make it as dramatic as it is in the comic books. In the comic books, it's dramatic. So they weren't going for that. So they did this whole car crash thing. Spoiler alert. There's going to be spoilers in here. Um, so some some things that were actually some of the action sequences were were executed. I think okay. Some of the VFX didn't bother me that much, even even though I knew what was happening in terms of visually what I was going to see. It wasn't that bad, I guess. I don't know. I got used to it. I don't know, Brian. What? It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. I, I'm more again. I'm more interested in the connections to other things that we're gonna get. And I said this before, and I called it cameos galore. And that's what's gonna have a lot of people interested as well in terms of how they integrate them into this world, this comedy world. I don't know, Brian. Your thoughts on the first episode? Yeah, I didn't like it. Um, it's interesting because you you correctly called that this would this would be like catnip for the critics, especially ones who are not like MCU diehards, right? They yeah. they were like, oh, breath of fresh air, oh, like this, like that. They, they don't really care about the VFX quality, right? They're just mm -hmm. like, hey, it's something different. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't surprised to see that this show is getting review bombed like crazy. I don't know if you've seen that analysis where it's like, yeah. 35% of all the ratings submitted are one star. And then there's like no other, no other Marvel show is over like 20. And like most of them are under five. So like people are out there for this show, like kind of trying to sink it. Yeah. I didn't, it's just not for me. Um, like I think Tatiana Maslati is like, she's good. I mean, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like the reason why she's got an Emmy in her, in her house. And it's, you know, cause when she's on screen, you can, she's holding it together. Yeah. yeah. But it, I just found myself this entire episode feeling like I would enjoy this show more if it wasn't about the Hulk. Like, it just, yeah. I'm biased. Like, and I, I just, I cannot get over that the primary mission of the Hulk now is comic relief within the MCU. Like, I'm like, and I saw these headlines, like there's a great headline on the ringer where they're like, she Hulk is the low stakes, comedy the mcu has been missing and i'm like the hulk has fallen so far that that's kind of the world of the hulk now to be the low stakes comedy in the yeah. mcu puzzle yeah. and that's just was my issue with it like Does if this wasn't sense? a hulk show if this was a character who's i don't realize she hulk in the comics part of the reason they did it the way they did was to have a little bit of a lighter side and she breaks the fourth wall in the comic book and they do that in the show here but I just couldn't get past it. I was like, this watching Hulk mixed drinks on the beach and like, it's just like, it's the wrong character for this type of motif. And I, I can just tell, like, I'm just going to be in more and more annoyed as we go through this show. And the other thing that I found kind of disappointing, which I didn't even know. And then Jessica Gao, who's the lead writer on this, has been out everywhere promoting this. So, Apparently, this is not the pilot that they originally shot. And I remember watching it and being like, 
it felt very, all right, we're going to break the fourth wall, but then we're going to do the origin story. And then it almost felt like they had to give you a Hulk on Hulk fight. So they gave it to you. And I'm like, I don't know that I needed that, but I guess you wanted to show me that. And then they end with her in the courtroom. And then I come to find out that like, that wasn't what they wanted to do, but Marvel made them do it. And so apparently what you saw in episode one, some of it originally was in the finale of the show. Oh. And I was like, well, that's not a good sign. If you took part of your intended ending of the show and the studio said you have to put it at the beginning, I don't even know what's coming next, but that doesn't make me feel good. So I just was like, I think I know what I'm in for. I think it's going to stay at the bottom of my rankings. I will watch every minute of it. And I don't think I'm going to think twice about it when it's done. I just didn't really enjoy it that much, even though I think she is very charismatic and she, you know, yeah. she I could watch do something in this universe, but. I hear you. I hear you. I mean, I. Listen, I, listening to the Hulk talk for more than um, 20 seconds is annoying. They have done such a disservice to the Hulk. It's just, it's like, I wouldn't know if I would be able to contain myself or the anger I feel if I met Kevin Feige and, I, and, we, he, and he asked me, what do you think about the Hulk? I think it would be bad. Yeah, Pablo <laughs> would become the Hulk in front of Kevin Feige. I'll be like, yo, I'll be like, yo, Kevin, yo, what, what the hell is going on with the Hulk, yo? I don't know what they have against Ed Norton, yo. I don't know what happened there. But I was hearing something about Marvel Legends that they didn't include. The, that Incredible Hulk movie, which I think is still the best Incredible Hulk movie with Ed Norton. Which is also BS because that then, you know, uh, William Hurt's Thunderbolt Ross is canon. So you yeah. can't like, you can't pull him out as canon and then be like, that didn't happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's people out there, man. Again, this, I, I don't know, Brian. There's people out there that are just gonna like what they like, I guess, right? They, and, and and this just wasn't for me. But I I I I I watch it because there's little things that I can enjoy watching from it in terms of the connection to the the the, the universe the overall and some of the characters that could be cam that cameo in there. You know what I'm saying? Those are the things that have me interested in. Yeah, I mean, I think also, I think they made a good formatting decision. I think having this be short, having it be 30 minutes is 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 a smart move. Like, I, I was watching this episode being like, if this was another 15 to 20 minutes, I think I would hate this like three times more than I do. It's like it got in, it got out. And, you know, I think that's a nine episodes, 30 minutes is is a wise choice. I think you should bribe. Has your, has your wife watched it? No, although I'm curious to show it to her. I have a feeling she's going to like it a lot better than anything else I, I think I so too you. I think so too I think so too um but yeah let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of She-Hulk can we also talk about so Jessica mm -hmm. Gow you mentioned the cameos can we talk about this yeah, for yeah. A second? are you as terrified as I am about the daredevil statements that they've made that this is a we're going to explore Matt Murdock's light side on this show I just keep having images of like what they did to the Kingpin and Hawkeye times a hundred. It's hard for me to say anything bad about Charlie Cox's Daredevil. I, of course, I'm concerned, but I have to wait and see what how they do this, and it can't be. This is the thing that, you know. It makes me wonder, Brian, you talked about, oh, Marvel said they made us do this. Is Marvel turning into the WB? <laughs> I, well, I made the case they're not as far apart as people want to think, but. Uh, I know, right, just, 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 just one is doing it better than the other. Or one has a lot more content than the other, but yeah, it's. Yeah. 
But like I, you know, I st- we've seen these snippets of Tim Roth, right? And he is playing a very comedic Blonsky, as far as we can tell. Yeah. It, it's not even the same universe of persona that he was in the Incredible Hulk, which, by the way, I kind of like. I liked his yeah. Yeah. Like a sadistic soldier in that movie. So I'm having a tough time when I see him like sitting in the glass case, kind of like smiling, and he's in the therapy group, kind of making jokes at She Hulk. I'm like. I don't know how we're bridging that gap in a believable way. I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm telling you, I know I don't like talking about it, but every once in a while, that 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 fatigue word comes out of my my my, in my brain. It just you know it starts blinking. It's like well, I, it's like I get I'm getting tired of it. Some of the stuff that they were they're putting out just to put out. You know, they're not putting out compelling stuff. I don't know. Now, Jessica Gao also said, and I, I kind of interpret it as almost like a little bit of a leak, but not a leak, but like a tease, that she's like, well, don't be surprised if She-Hulk starts showing up in the movies and in the team-up movies. I weirdly, like, didn't hate that idea after seeing this pilot, only because I'm just so over seeing Professor Hulk that I feel like if you're gonna have a Hulk, I guess I'd rather just see Tatiana Maslany's Hulk for a little bit and just see if it, you know it works a little bit better in the team construct. And let's kind of you know let's let's kind of give you know give Ruff- Ruffalo his thanks. Although as you said, it sounds like they might be trying to keep him around. And the talk of World War Hulk, I just have no interest in seeing his version of the Hulk in that famed storyline. Yeah, I mean, it seems like they're setting it up. It seems like they're setting it up. We saw it in the first episode with the Sakaar uh, 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 vehicle yep. in the show. Um, is that the beginning of him having a son and then He's killed, and that's World War. You know what I'm saying? The opportunities you miss out when you have somebody behind the helm saying, "Let's take a piece of this and do that." You mess up great storylines, man. And now you got to create this whole new joint. Just, just throw it out there. I'm telling you, man, that is that is the. One thing that I'm most upset about the MCU when I think about it, it's like a, it's like ugh, the, the disgust. Yeah, you know, when, when it comes to the Hulk, because the Hulk is a monster, yo. He's a monster, unstoppable beast. That's collateral. Listen, and not to go off far off the you know the 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 road that we're on, but the destruction left in Man of Steel. Imagine the Hulk causes not that much of destruction, but certainly an amount of destruction where it leaves people messed up, collateral damage. And him dreading to t- turn into that to that beast. He's been, they already told us in the first episode, 10 years he's been the Hulk. He's over it already. He's cool with it. He's not trying to cure himself anymore because he can't bear the fact that he could cause the death of innocent bystanders if he turns into this monster. That's a hope that I want to see. And Bruce Banner was the way he like, yo, Bill Bixby, he didn't like if, the way he portrayed Bruce Banner, David Banner in, in, in on the show how much he didn't want to be the Hulk. Every time this dude turned into the Hulk, he was walking, he was gone. He had to move. Why? Because too many questions. People are gonna go start asking questions and, and he just didn't want to be hassled because he can turn and without, you know what I'm saying? If you if you push him too hard, they, 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 they've completely erased that part of the Hulk, right? Yeah, well, I think it's part of what makes the Hulk stand out among the MC, the Marvel lineup is that you know most of these most of these heroes the, the 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 line between the alter ego and the hero identity is usually a costume right it's usually like I need to hide my identity so I put on the suit but like 
Tony Stark is still Tony Stark inside the suit, right? Mm-hmm. Steve Rogers, whether he's in his leather jacket or whether he's in the helmet, is still Steve Rogers. So the Hulk really stands in contrast to that because Bruce Banner in human form, what he's capable of, how he's wired, what he does is the polar opposite of what the Hulk becomes. And that's what makes the character interesting is that contradiction uh, and that struggle. And so they've they just removed it, right? They've been like, here, here's Mark Ruffalo. Here's CGI Mark Ruffalo. He's a fun loving green guy all the time. And he has all of his intelligence and none of his ferocity. And it's like, that's not, like, I realize they did that in the comics for a stretch, but that has not been the essence, I think, of what makes the Hulk interesting as a television and movie character. If so. you ask people which comic book Hulk did they like the best, is always um, World War Hulk, Planet Hulk, um, Heart of the Monster Hulk. Um, they, this one, there was one called Amalgamation amalgamated hook something like that and these hooks are destructive <laughs> you know they're beasts right and they just totally they totally ignored that i don't know what to tell you i don't know what to say about that um anything else before we move on brian um i didn't care i didn't love the post credit I kind of was like, meh, this is not a question that I cared much about answering. I got a lot of pub and they're like, oh, Kevin Feige wanted it done this way. I'm like, eh, kind of another, it just adds to my list of these post-credit scenes where I'm just sort of like, this isn't, this isn't adding anything. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Those are the, those are the, 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 I guess the, the, the best, that's why people stay for the post-credit scene to see what's next. So get some indication of what's next. This is not at further, ad- I don't want to stick around for this, but I yeah. stick around because you never know, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, let us know in the conversation below what you guys think of the she- of She-Hulk, man, the first episode. Apparently, the first two episodes are dope. The three, the third and fourth one are, are, are not as good as the first two, um, but I don't care. So I'm, j- I'm going to just watch it to see what connections I can make or whatever the case may be. Uh, Yeah, that's our show for today. We'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report.